podcasting with Kerry Jones. Hi guys, and welcome to this week's podcast. This week's guest needs no introduction and is one of the biggest names in the competition scene in the Midlands Reservoirs of Rutland and Grafham. He has seven international caps to his name and actually is this year's captain on the international on Flintraus Funnith. He's also been England manager in the past and also runs a very successful fly business flash attack to catch up with him on the veranda overlooking Rutland Water he talks of his top flies and areas and methods to fish including the pin fry which is happening right now welcome to my chat with Craig Barr well you couldn't pick a better spot can we overlooking Rutland yeah. from the lodge mm. I can't believe there's so many rabbits you see oh, 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 there's a lot around here yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So, have we had a good season? Uh, so far, yes. It's been a bit yeah. feet off, to be honest. It's not. This place hasn't fired this year yet properly for me. Graffin's fishing better, yeah. Mm. And no one knows why. I take a guy on here quite a bit, and uh, he called me a few weeks ago and said, "Where do we go?" Last week, where do we go? Rutland Graffin. I said, "A bit of Rutland. Said, it's just not going. It's just..." Up and down, up and down, up and down, up yeah. and down. Well, we booked one of these three days, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought, great, let's do it. And I couldn't have picked the worst three days, really. It was yeah. day for the beach. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we went up the first day, and there was a lot of fish feeding on pin fry, mm-hmm. on Tuesday, rather. We saw them on across the far shore there. I mean, there was lots. Yeah. And uh, we had a couple, and we went into, see, throw the three trees yeah. down there towards the pipe, and I thought, oh, this is good. Then it went glass. So then we switched then to the uh, the boils, and then we had a few more there. But they were deep. I, I to be honest, I, I started off with a sinking line out of the boils. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily the case, is it? Because it's cooler water. Yeah. And he just had two flies. Here's you, the albach, and just keeping in touch, slow figure out. And he was like, he was good, like on the boils. That was on the boils. Yeah. yeah. On a sinking line. No floating no, line. Floating line. Floating yeah. line. Yeah, yeah. I hate fishing a sinker, to be honest. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. suppose it's a competition, and you love it. I actually don't know. I prefer a floater. Yeah. You give me a floating line, over sink line all day long, every day. Yeah. If I could get away with it, I'd use it, you know. Yeah. When I go out now, all I'm using is floating lines pretty much because I think any catchable fish is in your margins, I think. Yeah. At the minute on here. Yeah. Yeah. So do you thrive on the competition scene? Is the competition scene you actually love? Yeah. Yeah. Do you do <laughs> much pleasure fishing? Uh, no. No? No. No. What about, um, I suppose, even when you're out, you're practising yeah. for the competition. Where is it you live, then? You can't be far. Yeah, I live 10 minutes. Wissendine, yeah. All right, yeah. It's quite funny, actually. I was talking to Nigel there now, and he's, like, walking distance almost to the lake, can he? He's just up the road there, yeah. 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 In the next village along. It must be nice to be able to be so close, like. Yeah. I might come back, maybe September time, uh, on the bank. Mm-hmm. It's been 15 years since I fished your last. We're at 15. Yeah, 15 well, if years. you're going to come back on the bank, I'd be coming back in November. Really? Mm. Oh, that's worth knowing. It's it? all moved. It's all cut the water out of itself. Yeah, without a, without a doubt. I wouldn't entertain here until like, back end of October, mid November at the earliest. Yeah. I remember, like I did used to come here, not a lot, maybe once mm. or twice a year for years. And uh, I made myself a rudder as well, and, <laughs> you know, and. I ho- overheard once, he was in a, some do. Frank Cutler? Frank Cutler, yeah, oh, he's, he's all past now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he was, ago, uh, yeah. and I was... Remember like, Frank, yeah. Big guy, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember him talking to somebody, whether or not telling a story or not, but he was saying, he used to catch a lot of big fish. And he said, there's a pipe which goes from tower to tower. And it's about 10, 15 foot all the way along, raised then, you know. And uh, so he was fishing the rudder, and that's what he was catching his big fish. It's a good story if it's not true, but I was doing that then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I do like my brown trout, I've got to be honest. Yeah, well, they're, they're becoming more and more prominent here, you know, at the back end of the year. A problem? 
prominent. Prominent. Yeah, they're, they're from November to January. It's wicked on here, brown trout. But it's all yeah. down the dam and the dam, middle of the Yeah, don't say that. Tell many people that. Don't <laughs> That's where it happens. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, I, I I get booked up. So does Ian. Come on here, back end, chase the November. browns. Yeah, I mean. Then you get the people saying, oh, you shouldn't be targeting the browns. But, you know, I've spoke with Anglin Water about saying, can I say that, you know, I've caught these browns. They say, yeah, yeah, you know, they're not, it's just because they're not in season, you can't stop them pulling your flies. Yeah. You know, as long as you return them, which I do, it's all barbless stuff I fish now. Um, well, you've got like big minkies or something then, is it? Big black and white, black and gold, humongous. All right. That's all you need. Two yeah. of them on a 15 foot lead on a die seven or a die five and rip like. Jack. Really? I'm like, yes. Yeah. And then they just come whoosh, right behind it at the boat, hang the flies, and they go whoosh, middle of the basin. At the, the, at the uh, damn uh, wall. The damn wall. All right, yeah. Both corners. Is it? Don't repeat that to Ian. Both corners are the places to be. <laughs> You'd be listening to this now, probably. <laughs> so you mentioned Ian. And mm -hmm. Do you ever, well, I guess I know the answer. I was going to say, do you have friendly pleasure days fishing? But you're probably I've had competition. one in many years, and that was two weeks ago. Oh, was it? On here, yeah. yeah. I bet then you couldn't even be friendly. I guess you got to <laughs> catch more, did you? Well, I, I beat him 7 6, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I had three in a rapid 20 minutes at the end. He was, oh, yeah. uh, I think, one ahead, and then I caught four in or three in no time at the last 20 minutes and, and overtook him by a fish. So, But we were out practicing for the Bob Church Classic. We were. Oh, he was right, doing one yeah. thing I was doing another, and we were kind of working together to find out what was happening. And uh, but that's been the first time in many, many years. Yesterday, I wanted to have a go at maybe pulling up a brown and areas which I thought would be good. And is it gibbets? It's called. There's trees all around. Gibbets, yeah, gibbets. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was fishing along there, casting close in and pulling, and all of a sudden, bang! I thought this is it. And he stayed there knocking. I thought it's got to be a brown. Uh -huh. And then uh, he just stopped. He just went just stopped and then he wouldn't budge he'd obviously gone at the weed or a snag so I put the rod down and I just pointed and I thought just pull it I pulled out and I pulled out this lump of weed with a three and a half pound perch on it jeez <laughs> yeah it's a nice looking perch actually I, get, I estimated conservative estimate actually really fat oh I dare know? say they're in there aren't they and that was a, a, a gold and black humongous mm. yeah so and a day five that was so uh, what's yeah. your biggest brown out of here, 13 1. Wow. Chew Valley, 15 12. Really? Chew, yeah. Were you targeting them or did it just. No, go? no, the one down at Chew Valley just happened to move. Um, I had a damsel on the point, two dialbacks, and a blob. Uh, it was the England, it was the England International. I was the manager at the time, so it was the um, officials' match. And third cast of the morning, this big fish moved in front of me as I was in full flight with the cast. Just had to be coming forward as this fish moved, so whoosh, within a second I was on its nose, straight the line back and went bang. Nice. And it took the blob of all things, so you know, that didn't end great, but you know, it was the accuracy of the cast, I think, that done it. Third cast into the day, a hook list, <laughs> big thing. Wow. Which I thought was a pike at first. Yeah, yeah. Um, put my rod down when I'd got it close to the boat, I thought, right, I'm not getting this thing, and I'll get some pliers out, I'm not going anywhere near this, and laid yeah. the rod down, the line went all slack, the fish was doing whatever it was doing, rooting in my box, come back, and Picked the rod up to the right, you come in now and horsed it in like you see these sea anglers do with big fish, thinking it was a pike, time to stop messing about now. And then it got up near the boat and the boat kind of goes, Jesus Christ, that's a brownie. And of course wow. the legs just went like jelly when I realised myself and I you know, just bored back down again. I thought, oh my, so I took my time. Adrenaline then. Oh jeez, yeah. I got it in and uh, lay across the whole width of the boat and I was like, holy. You got pictures of it? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got it stuffed, it's mounted. Oh, did you? Yeah, I got it mounted. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, got it mounted at my home. Yeah, I wouldn't kill it and just freeze it or chuck it, you know, yeah, I was yeah. going to do something with yeah. it, I was going to get it stuck. That's well worth doing, that. That was one in Chew? Yes, yes, it's, it's yeah. by enjoy my office now, caught yeah. by Craig Bar, Chew Valley, what's Dean 12, beautiful. Is that your house? Yes, yeah, it's oh, my yeah, office, yeah. 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 But, uh, I've had four done over the years, and each one has been bigger, you know, I wouldn't kill yeah. for the sake of it. Like, no, exactly, exactly. But, uh, I had like, the record rainbow out here. Did you? In 1986, oh, 14, £8.2. That's mounted as well, and that sits alongside it. Nice. So, uh, yeah, it's, like I say, I mean, that was, for me at that age, that was a huge fish. Yeah. I remember it, and uh, my dad ramming the net at it as I come into the net. I was like, oh, whoa, 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 leave it alone. 
Got it. it Does your dad start you off fishing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he started fishing himself up in the Campton Mountains in Scotland and moved down here for work, British Rail. Oh, you fished Scot- father Scottish? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Glasgow, right. moved to Derby. I suppose bar, I suppose it is. Yeah, Scottish fine, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Do you know what? I didn't realise No relation, it. unfortunately. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. I thought, why? I've got a bottle in the fridge here at the moment, I think. Yeah. 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 I was supposed to have this winter, I was going to fish for Xander here and Grafham with Davy Hoppy. Yeah, David yeah. Hoppy. Yeah. And uh, the three times we'd booked it, it was actually cancelled. Each time, the, because the, you couldn't go out because the weather was bad. Mm-hmm. So we missed it. He was tamping, like, you know, but uh, well, I'll give it a go next year. Have we done that? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, no, that appealed to me and things. Oh. No. Crocodile beasts, yeah. monsters. I'll mm. do it just for something to do, I think, you know, in the winter especially. I like the old season. You know, years ago, people used to, um, well, I did, come like 30, 30th of September, you know, I'd pack a fish in it. Back in. And then back, yeah. March the 1st. Same here, Oper. used to be April to October. Um, I remember standing on the Green Bank many, many years ago with John Wadham and my brother and my dad, and it was snowing April the 1st. Yeah. It used to be April the 1st to October oh, the 31st. Oh, April 1st, was it? Oh, yeah. April the 1st, 31st of October, shots. I used to love that close season. And then you'd get all the course anglers coming to the trout season for March. But because it's all year round now, you don't see them, which I think yeah. may explain some of the numbers on the banks these days. You're lucky if you get half a dozen on the bank now. Yeah. I was talking and they just have his there now. And he said, the last couple of days he'd gone round the lake and there's no weed yet. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, late or just not going to happen. Oh, it, it's there in air, as you can see it. I mean, down the dam, you can see it stretching three, four metres off the bottom. Oh, sort it? of too short of the short of the surface now, and the Sailing Club Bay, which is one of my hot spots at the minute. And um, yeah, there's a lot of weed about. It's all you can see it growing off the bottom, sitting several feet yeah. off the surface. It won't be long. So how many caps you got? Seven, eighth this year, captain. And where is that then? Wales, transfended. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! I just can't stand up, Liz. No, no. I've only ever I, fished I, it once, and I did okay. Did you? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I was with well, the England manager again. I was with the officials and. I won it again. I'd eight, um, put yeah. on a on a uh, dry three. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's, it's not the most scenic. It looks like you're fishing. No, the yeah, it, yeah. Is that, is that the one with the big? Yeah, the power power, power station. station yeah. Ice yeah. sauce sat right in front of your face all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. find the lake has changed over the years? Like how many how many years you fished it? Probably be thirty years. Thirty right? years now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Thirty five. Thirty eight. Actually. Is it? Yeah, since I was twelve. Yeah, fifty now. Because I remember you and him way back in the day, because I was doing stuff for Trout Fisherman, and in, in the same issues, the features, mm-hmm. you would be in it, mm-hmm. and I'd see you. All these years we've been in the same... Uh, Market. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I've never met him. Yeah. I think I think your brother fished Gown Fruit, a uh, small water competition. There's a there's an international, isn't it? You yes. don't fish a small water. Yeah, I, I did that, yeah. I, I did oh, it was you, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. I, Ian has fished it once. I fished it. For Wheels came last. Yeah, I think it's back in Wheels this October. No, no, there was that was Ian Wooded done that one. Yeah, yeah I'm sure yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I went to Ireland. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, England yeah. Was second there. Do you tie flies now? No, you don't. <laughs> no. I used to. I'm sick of flies, to be honest. <laughs> See too many of them these days. Yeah. How did that come about? Um, well, it's, it all started here. I was out with Chris Dawn from Trout Fisherman, and. Um, the late Chris Dawn, shall we say, and uh, I was down the South Arm and I was absolutely battering one buzzers on a die seven. Yeah. And um, he hadn't seen anything like that before. Buzzers on a die seven. Yeah, and he was waving over Chris, uh, he was waving over Peter Gathercole going, watch this, watch this, watch this. And it was, was amazing funny, how really. I was catching fish on a die seven, never seen anything like it before. Literally just 90 degrees to the end of the rod tip and they were however deep down, 20, 30 foot down in the middle of South Arm. Flat calm day so you can get away with it and there was whoosh, the rod would just go over. And he was just mesmerised by the tactic. Yeah. He'd never seen it. And uh, I came in and he was telling Dave Phipps, the manager then in the shop, 20 odd years ago, uh, oh, there was this craze just murdered these fish on this UV buzzer thing. And, da, 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 da. and I was quite friendly with Dave. He said, oh, let's have a look at this. And I showed him it. And he says, do you want to put a couple of dozen in the shop, Craig? See what happens, see how they go. I'll let people know you've murdered them for the magazine on this fly. And... That's how it started. I had one pattern, and one pattern went to two or three, and two or three went to a dozen, and 
How long ago was that? That must have been 20 years. Oh, 20 years, over 20 years now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so fished a, bit... a lot with Chris Dawn, a proper head case, wasn't he? Oh, he's, yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah, it was, like, yeah, he was, he was like, when I was catching these fish, he was waving over Peter Gathercole, like, going crazy. Chris, get over here, get over here, look at this, look at this. Look what he's so, doing, get the yeah. angle, get the angle. So how often do you get out these days, then? Um, I'm fishing now, to be honest, an average three times a week, four times even. It's a lot, uh, a lot of juggling with the fly business as well. Um, and keeping that's your main business, yeah? Yes, place, well, that's, yeah. that is my sole business now. Flies. And guide? I, yeah, flies and guidance, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, a combination of both. So I try to limit it to twice a week now, out fishing, um, because the flies are busy. It's keeping me busy. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's the time, really. But because you work for yourself, you've got a 24 hour window. You know, I can get up at five in the morning, yeah. get a few hours in there, get home at the night, set my laptop, get a few hours done there, fish in between sort flies in between so uh, do you actually um, supply flies to individuals or just to retail both all right yeah. that's the way of the world now yeah yeah i mean it used to be i mean i should do both all the time but and certain companies would only sell to retail and, and, and that you know they thrived on that and no doubt you've got obviously thousands of flies mm -hmm. have you got six patterns which you think these are my go-to patterns yeah what would the six be if I was late fishing on the boat, it would be tequila booby, tequila fab, traffic light cormorant, crisp packet buzzer, red holographic dial back, yellow owl. Well, I can guarantee when this podcast go out, I hope you got them in that shop there, because you have so many orders for them, the your top six, I guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah. We have plenty, we have plenty. Is it? Yeah, I mean, that, that there, I mean people quite often ask what what flies you go to flies and you could narrow it down to half a dozen yeah, and I'd yeah, confidently yeah. go out in a season with those flies I mentioned you've got all season you've got the buzzer the crisp packet that's all round fish catcher all the time long for me I'd probably try and add an emo in there if I could uh, the red holographic dial back the tequila boobies probably the most consistent booby I've ever fished tequila fab for the washing line not so much the nastiness of the fab but the washing line it, it's brilliant for that yellow rowl is a great all-round catcher and on the pin fly. That'll be on my cast tomorrow at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. What's your fly box like? Because I tell you why I ask that. I know guys, they, they tie four people, you know, they, yeah. they're like professional tires. Yeah. They look in a box and it's like paint and decorators. Other people's houses are lovely and mm -hmm. they, as they leave it. I bet you've got the best fly time box going. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, I have some very nice ones and have some very rough ones. Yeah. Um, I, what, what I tend to do is, uh, and well, I, I do it all the time, the wife just thinks I'm crazy. I'll have it only for big matches, man. For a big match coming up, it's Rutland, Grafham, Chew, wherever it might be. Yeah. I'll make a separate box for that day. Do you? I'll go out of my stock and I'll think, right, Chew Valley, what do I always do when we're down there? This fly, that fly, this fly, that fly. And I'll just fill a box, all pretty, lined up, all the sizes, all the flies I believe I need. And I'll leave the rest at home. I'll go with the, what I know works. The the international scene, um, I, I haven't fished international for 15 plus years now, but uh, the captain got to buy a gift for, for all team members. I can imagine they're going to be flies. Are they? <laughs> cheap and cheap, yeah. That would be the easy <laughs> Ones way out. Ones you can't sell. That would be the easy <laughs> way out, yeah. What can I get rid of that don't work? Okay, they're going to have a lot of these. Yeah. I didn't even know that that happened, actually. I better start thinking yeah, yeah, about yeah. buying of everything. Mm. Well, the Welsh team do every year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I've not known that in the English camp, so I'll keep that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll change now after they listen to this. <laughs> oh, dear. If you enjoyed listening to my podcasts and you would like to support the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. You get two extra podcasts a month. That's one every week, plus bonus episodes, photography, and exclusive content, plus full access to over 80 previous episodes where I chat to the leading anglers in the sport from UK and Ireland. And if you're interested in joining me for a day's guided fishing in Wales or experience a day's ferox fishing on Loch Corrib, see all the info on castingwithkerryjones.com. Do you know tomorrow? I'm out tomorrow, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, I've had two, three days mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was flat calm each day, but today was probably the best day. And uh, but I learned a hard lesson. I had food poisoning because I didn't have a cool bag. I'll never go fishing again without a cool bag for food on a hot day. No, oh, no. Jesus! I came off the boat then about that was twelve. And I kept in the van. I was in so much pain, you know. 
And it's the same really, come all this way for fishing for three days and the last day is a great day. The boys have done really well, you know. Yeah. But uh food poisoning. Uh, yeah. So have you found the lake has changed over the years? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um definitely the fishing the buzz of fishing which you could get brilliantly mid April sort of to early May is now early March, mid April. You do still get them on the buzzers, but it, yeah. it's definitely happening weeks earlier now than it used to. The back end yeah. of the season where, as we mentioned earlier, September, October. Well, that September, October is now November, December. It's happening much further back. And I firmly believe it's down to the global warming and, and the constant mild winters we're getting yeah. these days. The water's not really getting cold like it used to, so the cycle's altered. I noticed maybe it wouldn't make a difference if it was later, but on the, on the clock there, boats in at 8 p.m. Yep. I was in tune not so long back, and that's the same. I think it was all about June time. And it was nine o'clock, sunset, they said, you know, and I thought, like, there was a time I'd fish two, you'd be struggling maybe, one fish, two fish, three fish up until like nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. The last hour, it'd be bonkers. Boiling. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's to do with like staff, apparently, you know, and yes, safety. Yes, it is. It's, um, it's staffing issues. And I didn't actually realise I'd came down a few times this last couple of weeks and it's been eight o'clock. I'm thinking, well, in the middle of June, it's like the summer solstice now we should be out till 10 o'clock know. but it, that's it, right yeah. and it, it's staff and and yet nine o'clock to ten o'clock and here is the golden hour at this I time know. of year and, and we're not i don't know whether we're not going to get it again but it will be a shame where will we fish tomorrow then where would i fish tomorrow where will i be fishing tomorrow uh, shorelines i'll be um sailing club bay normanton always yeah. work there's always fish there i mean there's always fish there Sykes Lane, I know the fish are there on the pin fry, they've been there for the last couple of weeks, so they're not going to disappear overnight, so I'll be there as well. And um, I know they're at Gibbets, I know they're at Old Hall. It's the same areas year in, year out. They're always going to be there. And they are there, because I've been there the last few weeks taking folk out, and I've been catching all those areas. So even if there's nothing happening, because yesterday we went from the area, because it's not so, like a board to the area, you know? yeah, so I went to look for something special. And, but it was just devoid. It was different to the day before. There was yeah. fish everywhere fishing the sites. Yeah. So even though you know they're on the sides, mm -hmm. you would stick at it still? Yeah, yeah, because they're there. I mean, when I was out, I think the day you were here, two days ago, it was rock hard. I mean, it was probably the hardest day of the season so far. Really yeah. tough. But hot sun, no wind. And if you're not drifting a lake this size, you, you're up against it from the off. And uh, it felt like everywhere we went, the fish were moving. You've got a flat calm. You know, they're in shallow water in the pinfire, which is where I like to target them. So your line's landing on a flat, calm water, in four or five foot of water, in bright sun, clear water as well. It, it, it's tough. Yeah. Um, but they were there and they weren't playing. They just weren't playing that day. Did you ever get the brown ball? No, I didn't. Oh, maybe Not yet. Maybe Charles said. <laughs> Not yet. Are you on the case? Yes. Oh, I'm on the case. All right. Yeah, Charles Finney this. I've got uh, my sights yeah. set on that. I mean, it was lovely as the captain to get it. Um, I've been down captain. close. Yeah, I'm captain. Have you been captain yeah. before? No, no. I look forward to that. A bit bossy when I get that status. <laughs> <laughs> I was coached for the Welsh ladies team at one time, back about eight years ago, I think it was, in mm -hmm. Ireland. And uh, I couldn't be bossy, especially the ladies. And the most I say of us bossy, fair I mean, age. I say bossy. If I have an idea, we'll give them stick with it, you know. Yeah, exactly. You, know, <laughs> you, you, you have a plan and, and you'll always get in these groups, there's always people that think they know better and we'll probably do different and and I try that's I will try and rein that in because you know you sink or swim you have a plan you go out and do it it works it doesn't um and I believe that's the way it's got to be done yeah. there's too much individuals yeah going on in this game oh, at the minute you'd fish other waters because you're known in, in my head anyway Rutland do you fish other waters then obviously Grafham yeah yeah I was at Grafham Pittsford, is it? last week Pittsford yeah had a yeah. cracking day at Grafham just six days ago yeah we had 15 fish, and I don't think it was one under two and a half pounds. There was many knocking three, three and a half. Was it? Three, four foot of water, floating lines, bright sun. I mean, this is what's ironic, was on Rutland the day before, and I struggled like crazy in identical conditions. Went to Grafham, and it was the complete opposite, in the same conditions. We had an absolute belting day. Um, you don't fish rivers at all? No. Well, I salmon fish once a year. I go salmon fishing. Oh, yeah. Um, but as far as fishing rivers for trout and grayling, yeah. I've done it. I wanted to do it, I wanted to get good at it. Um, I went numerous times to England Eliminators at the Welsh D. Yeah. However, um, <laughs> sticks, weed, trees, I know. Um, bushes, rocks. 
does not. I've tried yeah. it, and you know, to get into the world team, you needed to have this river connection, and so I was yeah. keen to give it a go. But you know what? I thought I'm not. This doesn't do it for me at all. Yeah. So I've never been near it since, and that was years and years ago. I, I it's just. No, it's the hook in the weeds, the trees, the bushes, the snags, every five seconds. I do fish for sea trout maybe half a dozen times in the year. I'm lucky, I get the nod. I get plenty of people down my way, oh, there's fish here, and I'll come down tonight. And uh, I'm bass fishing. The bass fishing is great down by us. The estuary, you know. I suppose you're in the middle of the country here. You don't you Yeah, don't it's, it's all too far, yeah. 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 This That's podcast is going up this weekend. So for people listening now, what would they expect fishing now in the next month here. Is this the start of the pin fry? Oh, Rutland, the, the pin fry actually, the real minute fry seems to have skipped a week or two because it's now actually almost a centimetre and a half long in many areas, which is, again, not normal. Um, Mid-June, a, a friend of mine come a couple of years ago and uh, we called it the wolf pack because the fish were just going crackers on pin fry and it was like minute, several right. millimetres long. But now it's already at this stage, knocking in, on a centimetre yeah. or so. So, oh, yeah, I mean, they, they, uh, every year they start, as, as we've seen them now, you get them in the areas, crash on the fry, you'll see quite a few around the lake, all around the lake, not just in one area, they'll be all around the whole north south arms and the basin. But more and more and more, we'll start switching onto it. So, I still believe, yet, the best is still, is still to come. Well, it is, I know it is, because yeah. it's the same cycle every year. The best is still to come. However, it's a very short window. Two or three weeks. So if you come in, you need to be coming soon, because in a couple of weeks' time, when all that fry gets to that one and a half, two centimetre length, it just vanishes. It goes out in the deep. I think it's suddenly, sick to death I think it. natural predation, birds, you know, their instinct kicks in that we get hammered here from all angles, and they just go out into deep water, and it, they will disappear within yeah. the next month. They'll be gone, and that's yeah. it. You know, the windows are gone. Well, what do you expect then? Because everywhere else, really, I guess, come July, August is the dog days. You can see, mm-hmm. you know. Would you be fishing then? No. 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 I, I've, I mean, the water's warming up quicker these days than it ever has done. We've had some hot weather this week already. Yeah. You know, and it only, ne- I mean, I say no. If you don't get the hot weather, it will fish well. It will continue to fish well. We get 30 degrees, 25 degrees, bright sunny days, three or four days in a row, it will kill it. Yeah. Have we got any stories of lucky? The results or something went your way, you're losing fish. Or I find with this podcast, stories, actual people love. Stories of things that went my way. Well, Phil Burgess would love this. He calls me the luckiest man alive in fishing because I can catch fish not looking. I can catch fish, put my rod down. And at a particular time, I can tell a story here yeah. when the exact same thing happens. And uh, he always goes, Rudy really hell fire, you're at it again. Rudy really hell fire, that's his line. And uh, Two Valley, not Two Valley, tell a lie, it was... Um, Buell, the last it was the last home international last um, national qualifier there, and uh, I got a draw with Graham Willis, uh, a local res- fisherman to Rutland here, and um, the fish were high in the water as they generally are down there, and, and I couldn't catch them. I, was, I did quite well in practice, but come match day, once I've had a bit of a pounding, I was struggling. And Graham Willis sits on a dry, which was uh, one of mine, and um, that he'd bought for myself. Or I think I'd given him that day or the day before. <laughs> It was a claret popper hopper, and he took three on it, and I was... A popper hopper? A popper hopper, yeah. A foam head, it was a claret one, claret hopper oh, right. with a foam head on it. And he was um, three nil up, and uh, I was nymphing and never had a touch, and I thought, well, I've got to give this a go now. You know, what, for me, a rule in fishing, one's luck, two, oh well, benefit of the doubt. This is if I'm fishing against someone. If they go three nil up, it's time for change. That's, that's my golden rule. Yeah, yeah. Three yeah. nil... They're doing something right, different to what I'm doing if I haven't caught, so I will swap. And the 3 nil rule kicked in. I need to have a go at that. So I got one out of the box, fished it. I got three swells. He had three fish. I never got a fish on it. And I thought, oh, I need to do something about this. I thought, right. Took a step back, literally, which very rarely do this in a boat. Sat back for a minute and thought, what do I need to do to catch these fish? Day one, three hours in, I'm 3 nil down. Day two's over already if I don't sort this out. And uh, I put my 12 foot slow tip on, fast tip, sorry, which I'd done well at Grafton a week before. I thought, I'm going to give this a go. Team of nymphs, um, hop on the top dropper and uh, booby on the point. Anyway, chucked it out. 
Bill Burgess will love this, and uh, put Shh. put the rod down. I can see what's coming up. I put the rod down to get the uh, the lavatory, the um, en suite bucket, and um, away the rod went. I thought, Jesus Christ, I jumped round and grabbed the rod. Yes, got my foot, and of course the confidence goes through the roof. Right, game on now, three one down. And uh, next cast, it was literally three and three casts. Was it? Chucked it out, figure vein it down. Yes, and third cast. Suddenly it was three all. And I thought, get in, game on. And um, I chucked the rod out again for the fourth fish. This was sort of 20 minutes further on now. So it had gone, got three and three chucks, and it went three all to, to uh, Graham and I. And um, I chucked the rod out again, put the rod down to grab my fly box. I kid you not. Put the rod down, turn around. Grab, as I turned around, the rod bounced on the rod, to, and one had took it on the drop again. Fish number four. Well, wow. just by... <laughs> Lucky number two again. Yeah. yeah, just by leaving it out again. Yeah, and yeah. and I got another one. I can't remember how, because I'd, I'd be lying if, if I said, but I got another one where I weren't holding the rod, or weren't watching. I was turning yeah, yeah. the way, the rod went off. And Phil Burgess says, I swear to God, I've known not known anyone as lucky as you when it comes to fishing. And uh, that, that got me uh, a 7-6, I think I finished that was day it? with Graham. And the following day, I mean, it was tough, the following day I got seven again, and I ended up seventh in the national final, which is actually this year's final. Tell a lie, no, it's not, because it was Chew, so that's wrong. Um, I did qualify into the national that year, and um, I came seventh. I was in the England team, so it was Mentees when we actually went on to win gold. I and, never uh, fished Mentees. Never fished I love that I, love to, I love to do it, you know? Oh, it's superb. Midge tip, dial backs, washing line, dive yeah. free, that's pretty There's much two the guys you know, yesterday. That's where the local water is. Just talking to them about it, you know. Yeah. Have you ever fished Ireland? I have. Yeah. I'm going over again next month with the youth team. Where to? Uh, to Loch Ling. Um, oh yeah. I have fished Melvin. That was fun. I mean, the fish. Oh, was you small, fished that? Jeez. Do you fish in Melvin now? I'm just gone. No, no, no. That this was, this was time, however far back it was. Um, I mean, I didn't. I, I caught one measurable fish, I believe, on the day. Maybe it had been two, I can't remember. Um, I think we were targeting the Gillaroo around the edge as well. But when we went out into the middle, some of these sort of, I don't know, Solid. four or five ounce fish were hitting it like 100 mile an hour. And you think you've got a three pound on the end until it leaps out. And you think, you know, I'll get that into a little stickleback net when it comes in, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, good was fun. That, was, that, was that about 20 years ago? I don't think it was that Melvin. long ago. No, it wasn't that I long fished international no. 20 years ago on Melvin. Practice days, you couldn't make a better day. Nice mm. soft rolling wave. And we were getting fish after fish after fish, double headers, three in a cast, he saw nothing. And then on the international day then, I even had a salmon actually, on the practice day. On the day, it was like this, flat calm, totally different day, a blank day. Oh, jeez, yeah. Like in, I was in the uh, shared room, I forget his name, I was trying to rack my brains, um, with the lads, first England cap, and he said to me, Craig, what shall I do, what shall I do? I said, right, well, I've been catching on this carrot bumble pattern all week. I said, go on a fast glass, fish three on a line. Well, he did. He did. Three clad bumbles? Yeah, he did. As yeah. I told him, he was um, England top rod. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice when a plan comes together. Yeah, right? that was quite good. I was quite pleased with that. But yeah, it, it was nice. Time, yeah. yeah, it was nice, you know. Um, the old international scene. So when did you start this YouTube channel? Uh, this year. All right, yeah. Just this year. It's been I mean, a minute. done? It's, it's just one or two. We've got another one tomorrow. I um, Have you got a, a goal? You can do one a month? Yeah, well, well I wanted to do one um, in May, but far too busy. I was too busy. By May, April, May is very, very busy for me. With the I mean, yeah. seriously crazy. Um, and the weather's been crap as well. However, subconsciously in my mind, we needed to get out. So we were going to go out last week, and it was crap weather again. And... Uh, Tomorrow, how it's going to fish. I've been out here twice this week already. It's been crap. So tomorrow, how it'll be. I'm only coming out because it's going to be a bit cloudier. I'm hoping that's enough to turn it uh, into our favour because I want to get these pins right because I've got some real good tactics for them. Have you? Yeah. Um, you know, I'll put the link in the, uh, in the podcast as well. Then. But yeah, I mean, my wife bought me. It's been something I've wanted to do for a while. And without naming names, there's been other people that have gone in front of me. But before even I did, well well after I had the idea of wanting to be doing it. And I'm looking at their videos, it's 1,600. And then this guy that I know, I mean, he, he's right in the know. He's, there's nothing he doesn't know. He's proper brain yeah. sharp with this sort of stuff. And he says, 
you should be doing that. You should be doing that a long time ago. He said, you know, who is this guy? I said, well, you just, is it your name like you? No, well, why aren't you doing it? So my wife bought me a GoPro two years ago. Anything technical, as you're probably sensing, I don't do. It's just, it? oh, I've got no enthusiasm to even know what the hell this is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so, and that's my downfall. But when I came across this chap who I knew had all the kit, I said, right, I want you to, will you do this for me? And you split it then. The, the whatever you want to do, I'll take you out the boat, I'll take your guide in for no, I'll pay you whatever you want to pay, I'll swap your fly, whatever. So we've done a deal across all those three name channels, if you like, and um, he's going to do it for me because there's a lot of stuff on here I know that people don't know and I'd love to share it and there's no way of sharing it. And I know, I've seen other people's YouTube stuff and I listen to it and I think, I know a lot more than that in these yeah. fields, I feel. I'm not big headed, but I feel there's a lot yeah, more yeah. I can give. Well, you proved the credibility. So, so, and I think people are attracted to that, and I've had quite a few hits and views, and want, looking forward to the next one, all these messages were coming out of me, I thought, oh, this is good. <laughs> but I've got a lot in that. To be fair, I'd never done it before, and when I watched it, I got it wrong. Do you know what? I, I, hadn't, I hadn't said what I was doing while I was doing it. I didn't discuss, well, this is- You've got to plan it, haven't you? Yeah, so now, got to, yeah, well, ha having, watched the first, having watched the first one, Seems from the questions I got, it's like, you know, well, you need to get more. I thought, oh, fuck, I really got that wrong. But it was, it was good in a different way because I was just yeah. normal and natural. And I've watched other people and, and a lot of them seem to me quite staged, quite this, quite that, boring. So I've got an idea how tomorrow's going to be. Tomorrow's going to be more me. Now it's going to be, right, guys, here we are. This is what I'm doing. Here's my leader. Woo, and, and this is why I'm doing it. And so when I'm fishing, I'll be, what I didn't do the first time, which I'm doing a hell of a lot more tomorrow, is turn to the camera and explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it every time. How long are the videos you plan to do? A lot oh, of them are like 15 minutes. 10 or 15 minutes, yeah. It's yeah. short, yeah, because the guy that I is doing them has said that you don't want... I mean, I've watched a few, not naming folk, and I'm bored. I turn off. Yeah. It, it's too long, far too long. And so, do you know what? short, got, sharp and sweet for me, 10 minutes. There's a people, lot. People have got 10 minutes. They haven't got 20 minutes, half no. an hour. There's people out there, right, I've noticed, in the fishing world, and I watched photography... Uh, uh, YouTube's as well, videos. And this one guy summed it up because you get people out there, you know, they they, go not, they, they just haven't got a clue and it's quite cringing some of the things they're doing, right? And then, but he summed it up, this guy, and he says, and they've probably got to make a million followers, right? Mm -hmm. Or well, not so much a million, but they've got a lot. But he said, popularity does not signify mastery. <laughs> and that's bang on. Yeah, it's, they're just good at getting followers. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're liking yeah. lots of things, liking people. and. But if you get into it, the social media side, you could spend too much time on the analytics, things behind it to get your numbers, and it's like it's hard work. I was lucky when I started with the podcast. I was going up with a girl from Birmingham, and she made serious money from online businesses. So we set it up, and then uh, we finished after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Except an online business, they finished. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't because of that, it's just like one of those things. Mm -hmm. Come travelling back and forth, this and the other. But um, I didn't really know what a podcast was up until two years, two, three, two, three years ago. I didn't, to be honest. I didn't. No. I didn't. And, you know, this, this chap who, who I know um, was, was keen to have an investment in me in, in, in a social media way because he believed that he could do something with me that that I'm not even tapping into that he felt I should be. Have you got any goals for this year? I'd like to win gold in Wales as a captain. Yeah. That's one goal in the back of my mind, tucked away in there somewhere. Uh, goals? Not particularly. I'm very busy. Um, I've got a lot going on. I'm in Wales with the youth team next month. Um, I'm in Canada in uh, August. Yeah. Salmon fishing. I'm back. I'm in the international in September. So I'm just very busy, to be honest with you. Now, but the last boat is in, so it must be eight o'clock. He's got a bag of fish. So he yeah. leads me on to one question. Yeah. Where would you want to be to make your last cast? Well, bizarrely, you might think Rutland, you might think Grafham. I would like to be on the banks of the River Spay, casting for a salmon or the North West, which is where I go. Salmon is really floats my boat. If I was much closer, I'd be there a lot more than would be trout fishing, I'm sure. 
I've, I've always loved salmon fishing. I used to go with my dad and brother when I was 13. We went for 13 years on the Spay. Beautiful area of the country. Just love it up there. I'd retire up there. The wife would yeah. never do that, but I'd go there, drop of the hat. Such a beautiful yeah. place. But for me, the salmon, my dad always said to me, and I've said this to several folk over the years, you're not a true game angler until you've caught the king of the game fish, which is, everyone says is the salmon, isn't it? So when he said that to me, I said, well, we need to be going then. Yeah. And that's where it all started. 13 years on the bounce on the spay. We always used to go in June. Um, sea trout and salmon. Yeah, I mean, just something magical about the salmon for me. Just something different that really... I, I didn't me. expect that. I thought you were going to see on an evening in Barnsdale or something, you know? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Put me on a With salmon river. Basher. Oh, no, jeez, no. It'd be a dry fly. Yeah. It had to be something on Rutland. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, as much as this place, you know, I've... This place has given me many, many, many memories. Well, many thanks. Mm. I hope you'll do well tomorrow. Thanks. And I'll uh, look forward to seeing the video. Good. Pleasure. It's been great. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please consider becoming a Patreon. You can join my Patreon channel by visiting patreon.com forward slash casting with Kerry Jones. Or see the links on my website, castingwithkerryjones.com. Or see my posts on Facebook and Instagram. Well, that's all for now. Tight lines and don't strike too soon. <laughs>